This is a demonstration of a controller for the Blackmagic Designs Video Hub series of video routers. It's designed around the Arduino microcontroller's ATmega2560 MCU. This unit uses an Ethermega2560 with an LCD 16x2 display, both available from Freetronics for about 100 Australian dollars. The software allows for control over all SCI input and outputs as well as RS422 port routing. It also allows for RS422 serial control and destination locks for SDI destinations in RS422 ports. It can provide instant switching or deferred switching by using a take button. This is just a rough sketch of the current layout that we have here for our video routing using the Blackmagic Workgroup Video Hubs. As you can see we have two video hubs, one is Video Hub 1 and the other one is Video Hub 2. Uh, each of these go to various DEX edit suites uh, and obviously um, they uh, also go to the RS422 control ports. These are in turn connected to server computers uh, via a USB to Ethernet adapter because the server computers are uh, almost 50 meters away from where the actual hubs are mounted in the racks and uh, those server computers, which are uh, two separate computers, they're actually administration computers doing work for administration, but they do the, um, the, the server hosting for the hubs in the background. Those server computers are connected to just a normal network router, and then to that network router we have all the various devices, the edit suites, and you can see there in red are the actual controllers that I'm describing here. Here is my uh, prototype. Um, unit that I built into a uh, part of a Betacam SP box, funnily enough. This unit is connected via an um, Ethernet and it's actually powered through the Ethernet using Power over Ethernet or PoE. So there's only one cable going to it. When you first turn it on, it uh, comes up and just shows you the opening title and immediately goes into the very first display. And the top line is the destination. And the bottom line is the source. Now, if you look on the server or uh, a client computer, you'll see it's, um, it's very much abbreviated from uh, what that can show you, but there's only so much you can do with a display of 16 characters by two lines. This unit I've made so it has five buttons. On the right-hand side, I have a button which is, could be the enter button, I suppose. You could call it that, uh, or select button. On the left-hand side, there's um, four buttons configured to indicate up, down, left and right. Now, as you use the up button, it will change the destination. And as you can see, that's Edit Suite 2, and it shows you what the associated source is with it. Um, you can then um, keep switching up through all the different sources. So you can see as we're switching through, I'll do them fast. What the, um, what the left and right buttons do, they change the actual source. So we've discussed the top row being the destination. Now the bottom row is the source. So we can change the source. There are two types of source selection you can make with this unit. You can do what I call direct switching, or alternatively you can do what I call deferred switching. Now in direct switching, every time you change a cross point, the source will immediately change on the router. Whereas in deferred, you can change the source, but it'll only display the change, but it won't do the source until you hit the enter button. Currently, this unit is set to deferred. And if I change a source, you'll see it will change. And now an arrow appears in the top right hand corner. The arrow indicates it hasn't actually sent the source to the destination yet. So you can be continually changing the source going through all the different sources. This particular video hub I'm using has only 12 sources. In fact, it's got 14 if you include the frame store and the down convert, which are all part of the looping source selections. And of course, you can go backwards using the left-hand key as well. And then we'll go forward. Now, once you've selected the source that you want, and in this case, let's say I just want to put an NTSC Digibeta into the Terranex. And once 
you've found the source that you want to send, you just hit the enter button and it's now selected. And you'll see that update on anything at all that is monitoring the video hub. So here's a quick view of the unit being displayed in front of a uh, client computer. You can see we're changing the source and that is in direct mode and you see it's almost instantaneous. Now you can also change the source on a client computer and you can see as you change the source on a client computer the uh, little controller will instantaneously get information from the hub at the same time. Now, this is an example of direct switching mode and you'll see on, the, on that quad 3 you can see the moment I hit the button on the box it changes and this is actually how you can change it to deferred mode using the user interface. So we now switch to deferred switching uh, and now you can see that we can change the source on the controller but it doesn't change on the video hub until you hit the enter button or the take button if you want to call it that and you see the flashing um, arrow saying it's in deferred mode And you'll see as soon as enters hit, there's a ch the source change there on quad four. There's it changed again. Now this is how you lock a source. You just go into the uh, user setup. You pick the destination that you want to change, and you can see it over there. At at three, as soon as you unlock it, it then becomes highlighted, and when you lock it, it becomes grayed out as an indication that it's locked. And here's another example showing deck routing using the user configuration. If you have a look on the top right hand corner there you see that I've just chosen to route one into the other where it changes the two items. The way you go to the setup menu is that you press and hold the enter button for a second and once you take your finger off it then goes into the setup. Setup item number one is where you can select the actual video hub unit that you want to control. This box can control a multiple number of video hubs, but in this case, um, I've only got it set for two. As I've shown you before, I only have two video hubs on the system. So if I want to change the video hub unit that I'm controlling, I can just hit the enter button. It'll tell me currently that I'm on video hub number two. Um, and it shows you the actual IP address that that video hub number two unit is set to which again is all programmable. we will get to that. Now if I want to change that to number one I can't go up but if I hit the down button it'll take me down. As I said I've only got it set for two video hubs at the moment uh, and of course when I change down it'll show me the IP address for, for that video hub. Now, if you didn't already know, the IP address is actually the IP address of the server. In this case, I have a server PC that's connected to the video hub. So once I'm happy with the video hub that I want to control, I'll just select that one. I can then hit enter. Um, and I can then proceed into changing any other setups. But in this case, I'm just going to hit enter again. Now, you have to hold your finger down uh, because if I just push the button, it'll, it'll go back into changing the video hub unit. But if you hold the button down for over a second, it'll then come out to back to normal normal mode. As you can see, it's gone through a reinitialization again because it's had to re-update to the different video hub that I've just selected. In that re-updating, it's changed all the source and destination names, all the locks, the serial ports, everything's been totally been re-uploaded to the unit. Um, and as you can see now, I am in, um, this is now the other video hub and you'll see there's obviously different sources in here because it's totally different, um, differently programmed. And I'm just going up through all the different destinations. Again, the second video hub unit I have here is a workgroup hub, which is 12 sources and 24 outputs. And plus it's got a frame store and a down converter. That's one of the things you'll notice changing between hubs is that all your sources and destinations are going to be different. Now we're going to go back into setup again by holding our finger down for one second. Um, and we've discussed the video hub unit. Now we're going to the second 
Now this is deck routing. Deck routing is part of the, the normal functionality of a video hub, if, if it's a video hub with the deck controls. Now in this case the deck routing is, is in the setup menu but I've made it as close to the setup item because it is something that will be accessed quite often. Now in the deck routing and when we hit enter on the top row it'll show the current destination and the bottom row is the current source. Now the top row shows an arrow that arrow is indicating that that's a controller because edit one in this case is going to control something and the bottom row is what's being controlled now in this case it's not controlling anything and subsequently it is showing a disconnect deck controls are always deferred they are never instantaneous as with cross points if you have the option selected that's because a deck control actually changes two items every time you change anything on a deck control will select the source and the destination. So subsequently it has to be deferred in case you hit the wrong button. Now again we can switch through the different um, sources. Uh, now here you see it shows the source with a left hand arrow. Now that, that means that that particular selection is also a controller as is the destination. So they are incompatible. Now, if I go to the next one, we're just going to go up until we find one that's actually compatible. That particular item hasn't been assigned, so it's just coming up with whatever the label was. Um, these are all controllers. Now, there you go. There's a deck. That says VTR5, and you can see the arrow is going into VTR5, meaning it's waiting to be controlled or it is able to be controlled. Now, once that is what I want, I just hit Enter, and you'll see that source will change. So we go back to the setup item and we can go back and change another source just by hitting enter. I want to show you what happens if you try and select a source that's not compatible. So we'll just go up through some of these VTRs. Now there's an incompatible controller. You see the arrows are both showing that they are controllers. Now if I hit enter it's going to come up and warn me the source is not legal uh, and then once we uh, once we are happy or unhappy in this case we can hit enter and come back and then go and select a correct one again so as you can see it hasn't changed any setting and it's now displaying what it was and what it still is we haven't changed anything the next item is the deck directions. Now again, this is part of the Blackmagic router control where you can tell whether uh, an item is a controlled or a slave. So we hit enter. And you can see edit one is a control. Edit two is a control. Edit three is a control. Edit four is a control. Uh, that one hasn't been assigned. Um, there's a, another one as a control. Now here is a VTR and it comes up and says slave. So, I mean, that's what you would expect as a VTR to be a slave. Now, if I hit enter, it's going to come back out to deck directions. Let's go back in there again. Now, if I hit an arrow key, it will change it. If I hit again, it'll change it again. Just between the, the two items being control or slave. Now, I'm going to force it into being a control and it'll accept it. Uh, next setup item we go to, we can change the IP of the controller. The main use of the IP address on the controller, it notifies the video hub of the IP address when you go and change a lock or an unlock, which we will cover later on. If you lock a source on the video hub, the video hub remembers the IP address of the device that changed that source and you can't change that lock unless it's the same IP address off the controller. You can go to the server and change a lock, but you can't do it on any other clients. When we, when we change an IP address, we hit enter, and it comes up and shows you the first of four bytes of the IP address. And as you can see, it says here, this is address number one. We can change it by using arrow key up or down. Uh, if you hold your finger on the arrow buttons, it'll cycle up or cycle down. In this case we want to be 192 and as you use the left and right arrow buttons 
they switch you through address number two, address number three, and address number four. The next setup item is just as you do adjust the brightness of the LCD, you can change it up or down using the up and down arrow keys. If you use the left and right arrow keys, it'll change it 10 at a time. So you can go all the way up, all the way down. This LCD brightness is stored along with a lot of other parameters into what we call EEPROM memory so that the values are retained even after you disconnect power. So we move on to the, we hit enter, move into the next item. And I'm using the up arrow key. Now this is where we set the deferred switching. As I mentioned earlier, deferred switching allows you to either switch instantaneous when you change a source or defer until when you hit the enter button. We can go hit the enter button to go into deferred switching and you can see it says the defer switch is on and just let you know that you've got to use the take button. Now we can change it by hitting either the left or right arrow keys and you can see the other method is off being immediate. So when we get to output locks we can then enter and again it'll show the destination which can be locked or unlocked on the top row and the status. In this case the first destination is unlocked and we can then cycle through each of the 24 destinations. Now there is a destination that is locked locally. Um, what that means is that um, this box has locked it and only this box can unlock it or the controlling server can unlock it. We can toggle between lock and unlock by hitting in the arrow keys. So that's unlocked or locked. When it's locked nothing can change the destination of that particular cross point. We can now cycle through each of the destinations. Now this is another locked destination, but this has been locked by another unit. You can't change it because it won't allow you to control it. And as you can see, it says that it's protected. So there's nothing we can do to change that unless we go to the controller that changed it or to the server. The next item we have is the deck port locks. These are for the RS-422 control ports. And again, this is very similar to the video output locks. Now the next item in setups, this is just a special diagnostic section that um, when you hit enter, you have to enter a password. We won't go into that because that's mainly for my own purposes. The next item is about, and this just tells you basically what the unit is. It'll tell you the software version number plus a unique item number for each unit. You can also scroll down the items. In this case, we're going to scroll down to LCD save timer. What this item does is allow you to set a time for dimming the display. If you hit enter, it gives you values of one minute. So at this moment I've got that set to value one, which is one minute. The next down is zero, which means it will not go into dim mode at all, or you can set it up to a maximum of 255 minutes. We can then step up to the next item, and this is just X setup. And you probably notice that when we have exited the setup before, it tells that it's saving it. What it does is writes items to the EE prom so that it can be stored permanently. So one last thing I want to show you now is the use of lock and unlock in normal changing of source to destination. Now here as we step through the destination, so there we can see there's a destination that is locked and these are not locked. So if we go back to this one here that's locked, if I try and change the source on that, you see that it won't change. 